Friday, February 3rd, 2023, and this is the Washington Times front page. Thanks for joining us. I'm George Gerbo. The House has removed Minnesota Democratic Representative Ilhan Omar from the Foreign Affairs Committee for her anti-Semitic and anti-Israel rhetoric. Kerry Pickett reports Omar was ousted in a 218 to 211 vote along party lines. Omar has been vocal about her opposition to the Israeli government and its supporters, particularly on the issue of Palestinian rights, which led to the accusations of anti-Semitism. Omar, who first came to the United States as a Somali refugee and was one of the first two Muslim women elected to Congress, said Republicans were targeting her because she is an immigrant, a black woman, and because of her faith. Democrats have been questioning whether Vice President Kamala Harris should remain on the ticket in 2024 if President Biden runs for a second term. The criticism, Susan Friccio reports, much of it from anonymous Democratic insiders, centers on her lackluster performance handling key assignments and her stumbles as a party messenger. Other party strategists argue that removing her would alienate key voters and risk creating an image of instability in the administration. They question who could replace her on the ticket without angering the base. The money the U.S. is sending to avert a humanitarian disaster in Afghanistan is also propping up the oppressive Taliban regime, according to an inspector general. Stephen Dynan reports the Special Inspector General for Afghanistan Reconstruction, known as Saigar, said in a report that two-thirds of the country's population is being sustained this winter by international aid. The trade-off is that that money indirectly funds the Taliban's widely condemned policies limiting the rights of women and girls, including a ban on schooling past the sixth grade and restrictions on movement outside of their homes. Based on that, the report raised the question of whether the U.S. can continue providing aid to Afghanistan without benefiting or propping up the Taliban. You can read all of these stories at WashingtonTimes.com slash front page. You can also find the entire lineup of Washington Times podcasts at WashingtonTimes.com slash podcasts. Air travel has always been stressful for some, but if you're hearing more growling on planes these days, it's probably not your imagination. The number of dogs flying with owners is on the rise. Sean Salai reports requests for dogs to fly in airline cabins have increased steadily since 2021, according to the International Pet and Animal Transportation Association trade group. Carrying a small dog onto a plane can be much cheaper than shipping an animal cross-country or paying for dog watchers or boarding while you're gone. The economics are even more attractive for fully trained and certified service dogs. If an owner has made even a minimal effort to make it look like that's the case, most airlines will allow the animal to fly in the main cabin free of charge. President Biden's son Hunter has threatened to sue Fox News host Tucker Carlson for defamation after Carlson accused his family of conducting a money laundering scheme. If the lawsuit proceeds, Alex Sawyer and Joseph Clark report Carlson's attorneys could use the discovery process to question the president's son under oath about his foreign business dealings. In addition for calling for investigations into those accused of accessing and disseminating his laptop, Hunter's attorneys sent cease and desist letters to outlets that obtained and disseminated the laptop's contents. And finally, a four-star Air Force general has revealed in a memo that Chinese President Xi Jinping has convened a war council of senior military leaders on Taiwan. General Michael Minahan said in a memo leaked last week that Xi had set his war council in October 2022. Bill Gertz reports the outspoken general disclosed the information while offering his perspective on a military clash with China over Taiwan. Pentagon representatives declined to comment on the details of the memo. Find all today's front page stories at WashingtonTimes.com slash front page or on the Washington Times app. And find us wherever you get your podcasts. Just search Washington Times in any major podcast app. You can also find us on Twitter and Instagram at Wash Times for breaking news, sports, commentary, and more. For the Washington Times, I'm George Gerbo.